Net forces. Warm-ups, number one. Write that number in scientific notation. So I start off with the decimal point there, and I want to make this into a number between 1 and 10. So we move the decimal point 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 places. When I move it 6 places, I end up with the number 3.2. And then I multiply it times 10 to the 6th power. On a calculator, this might be shown as 3.2 E6 or just 3.2, whoops. Three point two with a space and then six. Some calculators are really nice for you, and they say three point two, and then there's a little times ten, and then there's a six, just like a regular regular scientific notation. But um, those aren't terribly common calculators. Number two, write that number point zero 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 seven eight in scientific notation. Again, I move the decimal point, so I end up with a number between 1 and 10. So I'm going to move that 1, 2, 3, 4 places. Um, so that's going to be to the negative fourth. Two ways to be shown on the calculator. We 7.8 with an E, negative 4, or 7.8, just simply a space and then negative four. In a recent news article, Bill Nye, that's the Bill Nye, the science guy, he was quoted as saying that global warming skeptics should be jailed by the federal government because, quote, this extreme doubt about climate change is affecting my quality of life as a public citizen. Science activist Nye said this in a video published on YouTube. Quote, was it appropriate to jail the guys from Enron? Nye, the former host of the PBS series, The Science Guy, asked an interviewer from the Committee for Constructive Tomorrow. Um, Enron were some folks who did some um, illegal stuff in the banking industry and caused severe financial problems around the country. <clears throat> and so um, he's alluding to the idea that it'd be all right to jail climate change um, skeptics. <coughs> Excuse me. Is this a valid argument? Or is it considered a red herring? Or is it an ad hominem attack? Or is it an appeal to force? <coughs> It'd be considered an appeal to force. It is saying, you must agree with me, or I'm going to hurt you in some way, which in this case um, means jail. OK. Today's grades, um, actually we do have homework 31. It's only six questions long, it should not take you long. Today's purpose is to, is to determine the net force on an object. Relevance by using a combination of forces helps us to accomplish tasks. Two people may push on a box or a car. Opening a bottle of medicine requires two hands doing different forces. Engineers have to combine many forces when analyzing an object's motion or design. Success. When given several forces acting on one object, you will be determined the effective force, or in other words, the net force that determines how the object moves. See the death-defying demo of superhuman nail resisting ability. Um, that's when I lay on a bed of nails and have people stand on me. The moral of the story is that each tiny force of each nail um, adds up. To equal the big force of the teacher's body. Okay, spend the next few moments, please, uh, pausing the video and reading paragraphs five and six. Now please pause the video and read paragraphs seven and eight.
One dimensional problems. Find the net force on each box by adding the vectors. Redraw the vectors head to tail. You may end up adding or subtracting the numbers. Okay, remember vectors are things that have both direction and magnitude. In other words, direction and size. We talked about velocity having both size and direction. The size being the speed and the direction being the compass direction or left, right, up, down. Okay, we can do the same thing with forces. How hard are you pushing and in what direction are you pushing? And um, we can do it both just in our head, but we can also do it graphically. Here we have question number one. We have 10 pounds and three pounds both pushing to the right. And so obviously we can say that the box feels a force of 13 pounds. But we could also do this graphically. We can draw the same size arrow of the 10 pound and then continuing from that spot, we can add the three pound arrow like this. We'll label them. And so the resultant vector, the net vector, um, you could also say the answer vector is from the beginning of the first arrow to the tip or the head of the second arrow, then we can see that it's going to be 13 long. Okay, next, number two. Three pound force going to the right, um, 10 pound force going to the left. Doing this um, graphically, again, we can draw the 10 pound vector with the same length and the same direction. And then, oops, Let's label that 10. And then I have the three pound force. I'm going to draw it in a different location, but I'm going to draw it in the same size and the same direction. And I'm going to draw the tail of that next to the head of the first vector. So I call this drawing the vectors head to tail. The, oops. Hang on a second. What's going on here? There we go. I have to redraw this three pound vector. The resultant then is the vector from the beginning to the end. The beginning is right here. Oh, I need a different color. Beginning is right there. And then to the end of our little train. And we can see then by observation that that's going to be seven, which is probably what you probably would have expected at the very beginning of all of this, seven pounds. So once again, you draw the two vectors head to tail, the head of one next to the tail of the other. And then the, that makes a train, so to speak, of vectors going around. And the answer will always be from the beginning of your train to the end of your train in that direction from the beginning to the end. Okay, next one. 10 pounds left, 10 pounds right. You can probably already expect that those are going to cancel out to be zero, and that's correct. If I was to draw this head to tail, I draw one of the 10 pound forces, same length, same direction, and then I draw the second vector, head to tail, and I see that I end up in the exact same spot as before. And so that makes a train going from beginning to the end. And so since we end up at the same spot, that's zero. The pictures above are called force diagrams or free body diagrams. They show the direction and magnitude of all the forces acting on an object. Actually, the force diagrams are not complete. They are missing forces from both the ground and gravity. Okay, now, um, these examples, the forces are acting in the same dimension, left and right. What if we were in two dimensions, not only left and right, but also up and down? 
So that's what these are all about. Here we have a boy being pushed off the diving board. So let's draw a picture. And we have a push going in this direction of 30 pounds, but we have a force downwards of 100 pounds. Now notice I've drawn these arrows somewhat proportional. The 100 pound arrow is about three times as long as the 30, uh, 30 pound arrow. I'll make it a little, a little bit longer just to make sure that, that is evident. Okay, so now when I draw this head to tail, I will draw them in the same direction and the same length. That's about right. Head to tail. The head of the first arrow is next to the tail of the second arrow. And so that makes a train going around this way. And the answer then, the net force is from the beginning of the train to the end of the train. in that direction. And so I'm gonna label that C. You might be asking yourself, why did we label it C? Why not X or Y or something like that? Well, that's because we solved this using Pythagorean theorem, which everybody has learned as A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So the 30 would be our A and the 100 is our B and we're looking for the C. So we have 30 squared plus 100 squared equals C squared. Let's get a calculator going. 30 uh, times 30 is 900. And then the 100 plus uh, whoop, whoop, whoop. 100 times 100 is going to be what? That didn't turn out right. Should be 10,000. Okay, there it goes. So, uh, 30 squared is 900. 100 squared is 10,000. That equals our C squared. So 10,900 equals C squared. And then I have to square root that. 104.4. Okay, a toy airplane. This has a lot more forces on it. So let's try to simplify this as much as we can. We have the force up on the wings. See, I'm gonna just draw a box for the airplane. Four pounds going up. Downward force of gravity. A little bit shorter of an arrow because it's a little smaller of a number. Backwards force, one pound. Now, I need to make this proportional so that's too long of an arrow. You need to have it kind of short compared to the three and the four. So that's one pound. And then I have a forward force of five pounds. So that's gonna be longer than anything else. Okay, those are the four forces. So let's redraw this as just two forces acting in the two dimensions. So let's just look at the um, left and right ones. This is like our earlier problems when we have the people pushing on the boxes up here. So we have five to the right and one to the left. So that's the same as one force of four newtons acting to the right. Now let's look at the up and down version. Four pounds going up, 
three pounds going down. So that's going to be the same as one pound going upwards. And so our answer is from the tail of the first to the head of the second. And we label that C. So A squared plus B squared equals C squared. That'd be one squared plus four squared equals C squared. One plus 16 is equal to C squared. 17 equals C squared. What's the square root of 17? It's 4.1. Okay, go ahead and pause the video and try to do number nine here, the toy submarine. Okay, the four forces, we have an upward force of six and a downward force of eight. So that's a little bit longer. And then we have a backwards force of two. So that's a shorter arrow. And a forward force of seven, longer arrow. Those aren't quite in proportion, but it's kind of close. Okay, looking at um, trying to simplify this, we have our two red arrows going left, right. That's the same as one arrow going to the right. That's a length of five. Looking at our two black arrows, up and down, let's see, that's the same as a two Newton force going down. I need to draw those head to tail. So I'm gonna redraw this two to be like that. And so our answer is from here to there. And we'll label that C. So two squared plus five squared equals C squared. Four plus 25 equals C squared. 29 equals C squared. So C is 5.38. Okay, that's the end of the notes. Uh, we will look at this procedure in another video.